If you're someone who's working in cloud or cloud security jobs today, your previous experience of working in on-premise could be really valuable in a cloud context. It could also be a reason for you to get a promotion or you're probably absolutely hating your job because you're not getting to work on anything new. If you're wondering why am I talking about this, basically what you would realize if you haven't heard about Monolith, or you might absolutely hate it because the next company that you're gonna be working for may have a Monolith or like a 100 year old software in cloud with the same problems that you had in on-premise, but they've been transferred over to cloud. The reason for this is gonna be lift and shift or cutting corners. Wait, not that kind of wood cutting. Cutting corners has been a long-standing tradition for humans for a long time, and it seems that modern applications are also facing the wrath of cutting corners in the cloud context as well these days. In this episode of the Cloud Security Podcast Originals, we will be covering why is cloud the new monolith, why you should care about monolith, and why are some people and companies allowing themselves to go down the path of lift and shift and cutting corners when there is an alternate option. And towards the end, as a bonus round, we'll also share what you can do today to stop this from happening with your next job. Now, the first thing I definitely need to cover is digital transformation. Now, you may wonder why, if, isn't the digital transformation a good thing? Like now that I can order groceries online and it gets delivered. Well, if you remember pre-pandemic, this was not a thing. Really? And a lot of companies had to quickly change between 2020 and 2021 year to become all these digital touch-free kind of services. Otherwise, they would run out of business, right? So a lot of people were forced with very tight timelines because no one knew what was the end of the pandemic is it going to be 2023? Doesn't look like it's 2023 either. Well, well, well. How the turntables. But that's the whole point, that a lot of people were not sure as to how much time they do they have so that they can drag the traditional method. So they all had to go through digital transformation. According to a stat that came out in June 2022, digital transformation sitting at a market price of $588 billion and is expected to increase by at least 26% each year all the way up to 2030. That we're still going through it. This is supposed to be a slow process, but now as per this report and many more sources that you can find on the internet, it seems that digital transformation is a lot more more needed and is basically going through what we did with a crunch time. And crunch time means you're cutting corners because you want to meet the deadline. And there are several reasons why people would want to do this. Now, increased demand in digital transformation means you have tighter timelines because you don't have much time left before you potentially your business may run out. So there's a lot of pressure from the business. And what this also means, you're doing a lot of lift and shift. You're putting a lot of this into backlog to say, I would come back to this and hopefully one day transform this digitally. But what this also means is all the new jobs that are going to be created around cloud cloud or at least everything that's moving into cloud is going to be servicing something which is a lift and shift or a monolithic application probably really old which you can't change and this is a problem why is lift and shift bad lift and shift is bad because you can't do security patches because you're dealing with on-premise monolithic applications which are really tightly coupled basically the entire server has the database the application probably the firewall and the load balancer and many more things in there which makes it really difficult for you to make any change on it so Think about things like your security patching. Doing security patching or making any changes to the application is super easy because there's a lot of elasticity. Talking about elasticity, you can't take advantage of the elasticity and the scale that the cloud provides. So isn't that one of the reasons why people move into the cloud in the first place, that you get the elasticity and scale? One more reason for people to cut corners is also you have a short timeline and people tend to forget that they have this humongous backlog of things because it's always good to just go on a new project, do new products and create something which is really transformative cloud native, whereas leaving the monolithic application behind. So sometimes it's just people forgetting that they actually have a lift and shift application that they had created a few months ago, or a few years ago, that is still struggling. I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Those people sometimes hate the job because they can see all their colleagues work on cloud native, all this Kubernetes and extra stuff that's going on in terms of automation, elasticity, like those kind of things that are something of a distant future for them, not even close to what their reality can be. So as you can imagine, it's bad from an employee perspective as well, because when you have a company trying to hire for cloud people, and if they are, if you are a talented cloud person, you look at an application, which is a hundred year old, well, hundred is an exaggeration, but you get, you get my point for a monolithic application in cloud which has been lifted and shifted you probably are looking at not many talented people coming in people who want to learn maybe they would be interested i want to learn about this is it possible to learn this power 
I have never done working on premise, so I want to see what that's like. So I'm sure there's a pie for everyone who is interested in pie, if that's the right analogy. I just wanted to say that is a bad idea to go forward with if you're trying to do lift and shift. Now you may also wonder, hey, if, Ashish, if it's that bad, why would you want to actually go down the path of cutting corners? Like why not just everyone can go digital transform? Now there are a couple of reasons for it as well. Sometimes there is no choice. Sometimes the real answer is, well, your data center is shutting down or you have to move countries or your company is shutting down and they have to try to scale down because as quote unquote recession is, is here, not here, however people want to say it or governments want to say it, that companies are in crunch time at the moment and they to take advantage of this, sometimes they have to dramatically reduce their size for things that they don't need and save costs. Lift and shift does not cost a lot, but using cloud native services, depending on the services you're using, can be a costly exercise to move something from on-premise onto a cloud environment. The initial cost could be too high and some people may just want, want to take the risk because what if it goes bad? And it's rightly so. The other reason is sometimes it's the easiest answer because you're trying to figure out, let's just say a mainframe, which is notorious in the world of banking for you cannot do anything with it. Can't do anything. There is no cloud technology that can support mainframe even till today if you want to move that to cloud it's only a piece by piece thing so some of the components would always be on premise but you can take some of these other components out sometimes it just could be the fact that you have dependencies that are softwares that are just so old they have to work a certain way because they're talking to this mainframe which is your main money maker has a memory of 4.1 megabytes but you can't change the application too dramatically because it stops working so there could be reasons for that to do lift and shift as well and a lot more let's talk about how can you even solve the problem you can totally solve the the problem by doing a few things. First, say no to lift and shift if it is possible to do that. No, 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 no. Prevention is better than cure. Train internal folks on cloud and the advantage of DevOps automation and using cloud elasticity and scale for advantages like you're able to scale or based on demand so you can actually save money for times that, don't, that you don't use a server, you can shut them down. You can use serverless applications if you are trying to build a cost effective, low maintenance, uh, hopefully low maintenance application. All of this fails and you still have to work, go down the path of doing a lift and shift just because either there's a dependency of the software that requires the application to work in a certain way or there are other software related reasons and not political reasons have a plan in mind for when are you going to come back to lift and shift and try and transform them if it is even possible to do that so have this reality in mind that there are going to be lift and shift everywhere it's just that whether you want to work on it or not is the question that you want to ask yourself and one of the one of the reasons i had was sometimes people just forget and if they are forgetting maybe you could be the person who could initiate hey we had this lift and shift thing that we had for a while maybe i can kick off a project to do something interesting because i don't know serverless has become a thing now and they, I am able to transform that into like a cloud native service. Maybe that could be one of the reasons for you to use as a way to get out of this hole that you're in. Now that the bonus round is over, the absolute end point is why do you even care? Or why do I care? I care because I don't want to work in a monolithic application because it reminds me of what times used to be. Not that it's a bad thing. It just is the reason why people wanted to go to the cloud. I believe in the elasticity and the scale that is available for saving you hours, sometimes years, sometimes months of time any application development, why would you not go down this path? So for future generations that are coming after me of in the cloud space, I definitely want to be able to create a space where there's not enough lift and shift if I can help it. I hope you would join me as well in basically denying lift and shift. But if there's lift and shift in your environment, you hopefully would find a way to find projects to base uplift them or have them convert into microservices piece by piece. Because the next job you may go to, you may have to deal with the monolith. And then you will remember this video that I that you watched from Ashish and be like, Ashish did, did mention this could be hard. Hopefully if you are not that person or you don't become that person because my secret agenda over here is if I make people hate monolithic apps enough, they would all transform digitally and we would all be able to deploy multiple times in a day. We would all be able to have patching done automatically, scaling done automatically, save cost on the elasticity of the applications that are available in any of the cloud service providers by using the advantage of APIs, DevOps, automation. So that is also my selfish reason to save my future job from not being a job where I to work on monolith. See what I did there? All right, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover on this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you are someone who's probably working in a monolith or has some frustration about working with monolith or has some good stories about it, feel free to drop that as a comment and I would love to respond to it. If you have any questions about cloud security, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. We always create cloud security content. We speak to experts using cloud security podcasts on the YouTube video and on LinkedIn. So definitely subscribe and follow us on our socials and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.